Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Barrage, and today we're going to be looking at a board game review. Hey guys, welcome back to Board Game Barrage. My name is Jeff, and today we're going to be taking a look at a review for the Kickstarter game Tiny Epic Western. So, Tiny Epic Western is uh, made by a company called Gambling Games. It's in a series of Tiny Epic games. Uh, it's by Scott Alms. So today, we're going to look at the box opening. I've got that done for you, so we're going to look into that. Then we're going to go into my initial thoughts of what I thought of the game, just coming out of the box. Then we're going to jump into uh, a little setup gameplay, and then we'll see what I thought of it after we played the game. So that's what I got for you today. So let's go take a look at that. So that was the box opening. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in this tiny box. Again, it's not that big. Uh, it's one of their tiny epic games, so obviously it's going to be tiny, and obviously it's going to be epic. And from the looks of it, it is both of those things. So there's a lot of nice pieces in there. The cowboy meeples look really neat. The uh, poker chip to know who the dealer is looks pretty neat. Um, you know, the cards are pretty well done. The artwork is really good. Uh, the, the artwork is actually very good, very good. I was really impressed with it, so that's one of the positives. Um, the card quality is also pretty good, uh, which was nice to see. Nice to see a game with some good card quality. Um, so there's that. There's also, uh, I think I'm forgetting something. Bullet dice. 
Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the bullet dice are also a really neat uh, component. That's uh, pretty cool as well. So, uh, I think you've heard enough from me for now. I'm just rambling on about the stuff in the box. So, I'm going to set it up for you. And I'm going to show you how to play a round or two. And we'll come back here and I'll tell you what I thought about it. Final thoughts. So let's go take a look at that now. All right, so I'm going to show you how to set up Tiny Epic Western today. Uh, I've already placed the mats, but all you need to know is the town hall, which is this one, goes at the top. The sheriff's office goes always across from it at the bottom. And then the four player mats go wherever that player is sitting. So if I was playing red, I'd be sitting over here. If for some reason I want to play red, but I'm sitting where the yellow mat is, you just switch the two mats. It doesn't matter. In a one, two, or three player game, any colors that aren't being used, you just flip over to the grayed out side so that they don't show a color. And that's how you know that no one is playing that color. But for now, we're going to just set up for a four player game. So that's how you do that. The next step is you take the industry tokens which are these guys here, which are railway, mining, and wagon. And you're going to stick them. It doesn't matter the order right now, but you're going to stick them. I'm going to pull this to the center right there. There's a little watermark there. You're going to stick them all right there. And as the game advances, they're going to move up, which will signify the end of the game, but that we'll get to later. This is just the basic setup. The next thing you're going to do is shuffle the building cards which have the blue backs so you're going to shuffle those up and then you're going to put one face up on each mat as you can see i'm this is obviously more condensed than what your game will be because you'll have a full table but i'm using I have to zoom in for the camera so the camera can see it all. So you're going to basically do that. The rest you're going to put aside for now. And then you're going to take the wanted card and it goes into the center. And that's where the bullet dice go onto, used for dueling. You put those there. And then what you're going to do is each player is going to take one of their people you can pick anyone you want doesn't matter let's do the bounty hunter let's say we're gonna be the bounty hunter so you take his card so every player is gonna take whoever they want and you're gonna get with his card you're gonna get three cool looking cowboy meeples and you're gonna get three of these tokens this one is force which is attack this one is law, which is defense. And this one is money, which is money. So you're going to set all those to one. So you can basically just do something like that. And then I'm holding this up so this if they fall off, I apologize. You're going to very carefully, when you're doing it like this, stack two of them standing up. And the last one is going to be laying down. So that's what every player card is going to look like. And they're gonna, you can sit them anywhere. I would recommend sitting them behind your mat, like so. So I'm just gonna do that, like that. And every player is gonna do that around the mat. And the last step you're gonna do for basic setup is you're gonna take the red cards, which are the poker cards. And you're gonna shuffle those up. And then again, because of spacing issues, this is going to look kind of bad, but we're just going to pretend like it all fits. You're going to deal one in between all the mats, face up. Then you're going to deal one to the rival, which is right there. And that one goes face down. Then each player is going to be dealt two. So you're going to deal to every player. The rest of them are just going to stay face down over here. And then each player gets to look at their hand of two cards and pick one to keep. So we'll say that if I'm the red player, I'm going to keep the five. Because the five looks good. I can do a three of a kind there. 
can't do much anywhere else, but the two is even worse than that. So we're gonna stick with the five. So once you decide which card you're gonna keep, you put it next to your person or on your card, it doesn't matter, just to signify this one you're keeping. The other one, you discard. So you're holding a hand of one card, you got your setup, and everyone else will do the same thing. And that's your basic setup for Tiny Epic Western. So now that we're done basic setup, I'm gonna show you how to play a round of Tiny Epic Western. All that's gonna happen is whoever has the dealer chip is the player who shuffles and deals the cards, like we've already done for this round. Uh, at the end of the round, the dealer chip's gonna to go to the next person and they're gonna shuffle up and deal them all like I showed you how to do it. Uh, all that does is shows who's gonna be going first in the round. So basically, on your turn, it's gonna go, each player's gonna place a posse member on a space on the board, starting with the dealer. So the bounty hunter, we know what card he has, because I showed you, I'm gonna play as him. So he has a five. So I probably want to be over here, because I know that three fives is probably one of the strongest hands. But basically each player is gonna place a token on any spot on the board. And I'll show you with the sheriff's office. Basically, you place your guy, you can place him up here, which if there's a building there, one of these buildings here, once you buy them, they go like that. And they have an effect there. So if you place your guy there, you would get that effect. But that's for later in the game. The other thing you can do on the sheriff's office, you can place it here, which means you can buy an extra um, card that is left over after everyone else has had the option to buy. You can place it on either side of this or either side of this. What these do is these two alter your card. This alters your value by minus one. This alters it by plus one. This alters the suit down one. This alters the suit up one. So the chart is displayed on the town hall, which is up here. Just gonna pull that up for you. So the hat, then the teepee, then the horseshoe, and then the bull is high to low, and then these are the hands that are high. So high card, then pair, straight, flush, three of a kind, straight flush. So we're gonna take, uh, we'll use this one here. This one's easy to get. So again, it's got the porch in case there was a card there. The other thing you can do is you can either place it here on this side, this half, which means you instantly gain one of the three um, influence counters, which is again, money, force, or law. You gain one of them, so you would instantly go up by one. or you can place your character on this half, which is if you win the hand at this location, so a one and a five, if you have the best poker hand of three cards, you would get two influence. You have to take the same one if you do that one. And again, if you win, this is the extra bonus you would get. So if you're here, it's if you win, you'll get two, and then anyone who wins on this mat gets two regardless. So if you did put it here, so you got one instantly and won the hand, you'd also get those two. So players take turns placing their meeples around the board. You also need to be on a mat to have the option to buy that building during the build phase. So we'll say he puts his there and that would be the blue guy's turn. You know, he decides he's going over here. The yellow guy decides, you know, he's going over here. And the green guy decides he's going here. And play continues like that until everyone has placed a guy. So it's green's turn. And they decide, you know what? I don't like that blues over there. I want, I kind of want those resources over there. I'm going to fight him for it. So green wants to also be here. So when green places the meeple there, 
it starts a combat. So the way combat works is I use the tiny epic box, but green is going to pick up their dice, and red's going to pick up their dice, and they roll, and they throw them in. And then the high, whoever has the highest number is the winner. So green has a six, and red also has a six. So during a tie, a tie always goes to the person who placed their meeple first, which is the defender. So since they both have a six, red is currently the winner, which means green has two options. Green can either A, since he's the attacker, he can pay force, which is this guy. He can pay one to re-roll the dice. Um, if you're the defender and you're the lower amount, you pay law to re-roll the dice. You'd pay one. So since he knows no matter what he rolls, he can't beat the six, the other option he can do is he can flip his card face up. And if he flips that face up, he can add its point value to his score. So he chooses to do that. So now he's got nine. Six plus three is nine. But red can also do that. And as we know, red has a five. So he reveals his five. And now he has 11. Once your card is revealed, it stays revealed for the whole turn. So they, even if they battled again, they couldn't reflip their card or add their score again. So they both flip their card. So green loses the fight. The dice are returned to the center. And what happens is green character, green's character is knocked down and the red guy asserts dominance and stands on him, which means that the green guy is wounded, but green can still, even though green is wounded, green can still buy this if it's still here at the end of the buy phase and compete for the best hand at this location. If green wins, it would still get this. It can't get this because it's wounded, but he can still win this. So everyone's placed their guys. Because uh, the bounty hunter won a fight, he gets the wanted card. The wanted card grants... Um, if you are wanted at the beginning of phase three, you gain a singular resource. And then if you are wanted at the end of the game, you gain two victory points. So he would hang on to this card now. Once another fight takes place, whoever the winner of that fight is, takes it from him, no matter if he was involved or not. So then we go into the resolution, which is to show what everyone got. So at this point, everyone would flip over their cards. So he flips over his, he flips over his, and he flips over his. And then you compare hands to see who has the best hand in what location. So blue, over in the yellow thing here, he wants to try and get both of those. So since no one is there, he has to battle against the face down card. So this gets flipped over and it's a four. His is a one. So the gunslinger had a one. So he had a pair of ones with a four high. The rival has a pair of fours with a one. So the rival would actually win, which means blue guy unfortunately gets nothing because he didn't take it instantly. He tried to win the hand and it just so happened that the rival's card was better. So he would get nothing. Then you move to the next mat here and green instantly got one. So she has no chance at this, but she can still win this. She has she has a four high. I don't know why she thought that'd be good, but she has a four high. Um, the rival has a pair of fours, which means the rival wins this as well. Over here, the rival has a five, a four, and a one. Yellow has a five, a two, and a one. So the rival would win again over here against yellow. So he would unfortunately get nothing as well. Finally, the last mat is green versus red. So green has two fives with a three high and red has three fives. So red would win this one, which means, we'll zoom this in here. 
So because he's on the mat, red, because he went to that side, would get the two law. So that would go up to three. Then he also wins the mat, which is right there. So he'd get, sorry, yeah, he'd get two law and two force in total. So he's at three and three and one money because that never went up. Then the last thing you do is you resolve the finishing at the town hall. So the town hall doesn't use the rivals card. It's whoever has the best hand with those two cards. So red has a pair of fives, uh, which beats the gunslinger who ha who's blue, who has a five high. It also beats the rancher who has a five high. But green, the cowgirl, has a straight, a five, four, and a three. So she would get to pick any of the three tokens and advance it by one, advance the industry by one. So she just chooses the railway, which moves into the third spot. And that would be the first round. Then you go into the buying phase. So since he is, he would have gained one because he had the wanted card. So he moves, he decides to move his money up by one. So now he's got three law, three force, and two money. Now, the last thing that happens is in order, you can buy, in order with whoever won that, you buy places that your person has to be on. So for example, um, the red character can buy the barber shop because he has a person there, or he can buy the central bank because he has a guy there as well. So the cowgirl can either buy the barber shop or the haberdashery because she has a character there and even though the character is wounded she can still buy this unfortunately she only has one in each um, stat so she can't afford to pay the two coins and one law for that or the two coins one law and one force for that so she chooses not to buy anything the bounty hunters turn he's gonna buy the barber shop so he pays his two coins and one of each law and force and he gets the barbershop. So what happens is, I'm just gonna move this guy's meeple off there for a sec. When he buys this, it's worth the two victory points and one point in mining and one point in wagon. So what happens is he sticks it like that on his mat and now anyone who places a meeple there will get this effect instantly as soon as they place it there. Rearrange the building cards in the porch slot at any location mat to place another building card from there on top to become usable. So that means is if throughout the rounds this guy had bought something else and he had it looking like that, you could use that effect to move it like that. Like that. Sorry, like that. Anyway, so he elects to buy that. So now his mat looks like that. We'll put yellow back where he was. And then you just go around the table like that. And if so, if no one else buys anything, anyone who didn't buy something in phase three gets to stand their meeple up, their third one, for use next round. Then everyone collects their meeples back. So we'll let him stand up. Any um, buildings get replaced. So now the opera house would go here. All of the poker cards are collected up and shuffled obviously by the new dealer. Oh, green, you almost forgot a guy. 
poker chip goes to the next player, who then shuffles these up and would deal them out uh, to start the next round. So the game lasts six rounds. Um, each round you're going to move one of the industry tokens to one spot further up. So all three can exist on this space. Only two can move up to the second and only one can ever be in the first position. And at the end of the game, um, you can see there, whoever has the most stocks in whichever one finishes first gets five points. Whoever is second gets three points. Whoever has the most stocks in the second finisher gets three victory points. Whoever has the second most gets two. And in the third position, uh, whoever has the most gets two. Second most gets one. And the way you figure that out is if you bought this building, it's worth three victory points and two stocks in mining. So you add that up. Whoever has what on the bottom of their, in the porch slot of their card, like so. I'll just give you a little example here. So say red finished like that. The red character would have one stock in wagon, three in mining, and two in railway. And he'd also have eight victory points already. So um, all you would do is add everyone's score up and whoever had the most stock in the highest one, which was railway, would get the five points. Whoever had the second most would get three and so on. You do it for all of them. You get bonus victory points. And then whoever has the most victory points after that is the winner. And that's how you play Tiny Epic Western. So after playing the game, um, the positives coming out of the game are it's pretty quick. You know, it's not that long of a game. Uh, it's only six rounds. So, you know, it's about a half an hour to 45 minutes playtime if you play with uh, experienced players. Teaching people, it can push upwards of an hour, uh, which still isn't too bad because it's not too much to uh, teach. And again, there's a lot of stuff going on in the game. So you've got your poker hand. So you're trying to place meeples where you know you're going to win the fights. Uh, if you fight someone else, you know, you're trying to place them where you can buy the cards as well. Because, again, you can only buy the cards uh, where you have a meeple standing or if it's knocked down from losing a fight. So that's, um, that's cool. There's a lot of stuff going on. I do wish that um, you did more with the cards or more with the playing poker. It's only really, it only really comes into effect when you're... Um, trying to resolve the hands, which, you know, I mean, I know it's kind of hard to add more card playing into the game because it is a pretty juicy game as it is, but I wish they could have maybe somehow incorporated it into maybe placement or something like that. Um, and then arguably the coolest um, component in the game, the, uh, what's that? Dice. Yeah, those. The bullet dice. I wish we did more with them than, you know, it's only for combat. There's no other time you roll dice. And I really liked rolling those dice. They're really cool. Uh, I'm currently using them in a bunch of other games that use D6s because of how neat they are to throw. Uh, so I wish that those could be incorporated into the game a bit more. But overall, it's a pretty solid game. Um, it's one that I wouldn't play all of all of the time, but if you're looking for a Western game, uh, this is the one for me. Um, it rivals Bang the Dice Game because I'm not a huge fan of dice games, so uh, I like this one better. But again, it's all about uh, your tastes. Uh, for me, I would rate this one probably a six out of ten. Uh, it's not great, like it's not. It didn't blow me out of out of the water or anything. But it's, a, but it's a decent game that definitely comes to the table more often than not. Uh, that'll be it for us. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching our video. For more, you can visit our channel for weekly updates or subscribe below. Thanks again.